There's a lot to consider when it comes to the money. A lot. And before <laughs> you make a mistake that could cost you, Trevor Shakiba with the Shakiba Group has tips for first time home buyers. Hey, Trevor. Hey, yeah, how are y'all? We're doing you know, well. Thanks for joining great. us yeah. today. Now, this is a huge, you know, can of worms to yep, open yep. because <laughs> there are so many questions when it comes to buying a home. But the first thing you recommend is that when couples are first shopping for a home, it's their first home, they have a wish list of all these Stop. things they yes. want. Yes. So, how critical is it that we get everything on our must-have list? I would say not critical at all. Um, in fact, right out of the, uh, the gate from a financial perspective, you definitely don't want to buy your dream home, right? Um, like the, the home you grew up with your parents. It's actually the biggest mistake I see young couples make is they buy too much home too soon and they overextend. So a, a quick metric for y'all is 2.5 times income. So if you make 100000 you don't want to buy a house that's more than 250000 so you still have really good cash flow. Oh, that's wow. a quick and easy calculation yeah. to do. Yeah, that's a great tip. Okay, okay so, so think of it as a starter home. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Starter. Okay, what about using all your cash reserves for a down payment? Yeah, so I see this mistake as well sometimes. Um, you definitely want to avoid PMI if you can, private mortgage insurance, and not just give away money. But at the same time, you don't want to completely liquidate your cash reserve as a down payment because then if something happens, maintenance, you're relying on credit cards. Right. And for people who don't know what PMI is or mortgage insurance, that's essentially if you put less than 20% down on a home, then lenders may consider you a riskier Risk. buyer, which is why you pay this extra Yeah, exactly. Amount. So it's, it's basically to protect the lender because they want you to have skin in the game. And so if you don't have 20%, they got to make sure if you default on the loan, they're going to be okay. Got it. Okay. But you're not recommending, I mean, if someone only has 10% down, you would still recommend that they shop for a home and buy a home, but eventually you'd want to refinance or do something to yeah. get rid of that yeah, PMI. It's a, it's a great point. Um, I think it's even more critical that you have good liquidity and cash reserves because if you don't, uh, again, you can really put yourself in a precarious situation. What about I mean, having like a little extra piggy bank for you when you've bought that home, you're going through the process, right. but you need to have just to hold back just a little bit in case of leaky faucets or any other unexpected expenses that might pop up? Yeah, absolutely. I, I recommend three to six months of expenses. And don't forget, it's not just the mortgage payment. A lot of people will look at interest and principal only. Taxes, insurance, maintenance. HOAs, maintenance. And that's uh, three to six months outside of your emergency fund that all of us should have? Right. I, I, I would recommend that. Especially, I mean, think about Houston. Heat, new AC, seven, eight grand. I mean, those are the types of things you want to factor in. On the flip side of that, though, I think for a lot of first-time homebuyers, I mean, I know when I bought my first place, I was shocked at how much money I was saving in taxes every month because of the interest I was paying on the loan. Yeah. And so there is a, a cost benefit, right? I mean, would you recommend that first-time buyers maybe sit down with a financial advisor to see what their tax liability would be? 100%. Uh, I might be biased because I am a financial planner. <laughs> um, but you got to have a plan, right? And do your due diligence before you, you look at buying a home. I mean, the other thing, as we've seen, is buying a home can be emotional. So take that emotion out. Run the numbers and make sure that you factored all these different things in. Okay, so both of us are uh, like fixer-up TV show junkies. <laughs> yes, me too. <laughs> what about buying a fixer-upper? Well, I, you know what I, I said here is approach it with extreme caution. Um, I watch a lot of those shows too, and at one point I think I convinced myself that I might be able to do that full time. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We but, all think that. No, it's like you're sitting at home on the couch with a glass of wine, and you're like, I am just like Joanna Gaines. Yeah. I could buy that. I could fix it up. But you're saying use caution, use right? Use caution. I, if you don't have those skills or know a bunch of contractors, and perhaps even buy something at a deep, deep discount. Just be careful. I've seen, uh, I've seen folks get into trouble there. Oh, gosh. Oh, no gosh. No fixer-upper for would JB. Be me. Okay. <laughs> what about getting pre-approved? Yeah, you know, this is, this is a no-brainer. I think your previous guest mentioned it, but yeah. in a competitive market like Houston, you got to be pre-approved because if there's three, four, five different offers, you don't want to lose the house because you didn't have that pre-approval. Well, yeah. and there, there's 100,000 people moving into yes. the Houston area every year, a million yeah. people a decade, so there's a lot of competition going on. Lots of competition. Take that off the table because, you, you know, if I'm selling a home and there's three offers, I'm definitely going to look at, at, at the folks that are pre-approved. So Trevor, we've seen a little bit of volatility in the market and at this moment right now, stocks are down yes. 235 points. Yes. So when it comes to real estate as an investment, what do you recommend? 
Well, I think real estate's a great investment. Um, and, and in fact, it should be in conjunction with your investment portfolio. Remember though, that every investment goes up and down. There's no sure thing, so the market right now is volatile. Because so don't freak out because it's down a little yes, bit today on your 401k. Don't freak out, remember <laughs> yeah. volatile, if there's volatility, that means there's uncertainty. But for my clients, we focus long-term on financial planning, discipline, staying the course, because short-term, you're always gonna have noise and things to freak out about. But does that mean though you should ignore what the market is doing though? Like if I'm looking for a home to buy right now, should I just not pay attention when the stock market goes up and down? Well, I think for most folks, paying attention day to day will drive you crazy, Yeah. right? Um, because right now, everybody's concerned about what the Fed's gonna do next week. We don't know. Are they gonna raise rates, are they not? But if, if you tie it back into real estate, yeah, I, I wouldn't put too much focus on what your stock portfolio is doing because remember, you need that buffer with your cash reserve but and that liquidity. you should do some research yourself though too, right? On the, on the, the real estate, and absolutely. Remember, going back to that due diligence, take as much questions off the table, take emotion off the table. I think that goes for all investments, but in particular real estate and your, and yeah, your stock portfolio. Yeah, if you can eliminate those surprises yeah. before they pop up, that is a good thing. Now listen, you can check out the Shakiba Group at AmeriprizeAdvisors.com. Thank you so yeah, much, thank Trevor. thank you. We'll see you again. Okay. And be sure